and welcome to the Expat View, where we're all about knowing and growing expat women. I'm Renee Letterman. And I'm Marie Bryce, and we're coming to you from our living room in Houston, Teals. Today we have Marion Bell back with us, and we're going to be talking about expat children and eating healthy. Marion, welcome Marion. Thank you. Will you talk to us about improving the immune system for children? Well, one of the things that I think is important is that kids get sick so quickly these days because we have so many people and they're around so many people. It's really one of those places where I think that we can really shorten that span and keep them healthier. Um, I know it seems very silly, but washing our hands taking baths, washing things around us more, mm -hmm. not with antibacterial, just plain water, a little bit of soap at times, really taking the time to be hygienically good, mm -hmm. in good shape. And I think that I'm seeing kids now, they're not washing their hands as much, they're coming and doing things and touching, and I do not hear the parents saying, did you wash your hands? Mm -hmm. Or here's a Kleenex, just wipe down the side of that or take your pencils and wipe them. I think that it's important and that these germs that we don't realize in the air itself are the things that are actually not just the hugging and kissing that we're doing. Uh -huh. So just taking a little bit more time to be mm -hmm. fastidious. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the, um, the children are being exposed to different bugs and different germs and different things in different countries and foods as well as areas. And I guess common places too where they're actually right. congregating, even flying to another country, being on a plane with 500 other people. Right. And that's another thing. Let's build up the immune system before a person gets sick. Uh -huh. It not only applies to kids, but to adults also. So what I'm interested in is the flora in their body is in good shape. So if you can get your kids to eat some yogurt. Now I'm not talking about frozen yogurt. I'm not talking about yogurt that has extra sugar in it. Okay. I'm talking about plain yogurt that you as the parent adds a little bit of sweetener or jelly so that they are getting the taste that they need or even uh, maybe a little vanilla flavoring that you're not buying these yogurts that they're mimicking yogurts so that puts good bacteria into their system and also either way if you're in Europe coming here or here going to Europe or another foreign country that you're giving your kids acidophilus mm -hmm. which helps again little tablets that helps with the flora Kids need to also have a little bit of lemon juice water every day. Why is that? Because it actually cleans out all the organs and sets the flora correctly for them. Hmm. Now, some kids don't want a little lemon juice water. You hardly can get kids to drink water. Yeah. So let's go back and say we need kids to drink more water to uh -huh. get hydrated. Mm -hmm. And then if you can add a little bit of lemonade to their water using, again, a tiny bit of sweetener, honey, uh -huh. agave nectar, not three tablespoons of sugar, but a little teaspoon not to sweeten it. That lemon water will clean out their system and help build the immune system also. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to also mention kids need sleep. That was my next question. Oh my gosh. Kids get sick because they are not rested. Uh -huh. I think that we don't realize that kids actually need 12 hours of sleep. Wow. Most young, the younger they are, the more they mm -hmm. need their sleep. And they changing don't, time zones and things. Yes. Do you try and get them to get that sleep. We expect them to come to attention <laughs> when we are stressed out and trying to move somewhere, and our attention needs to be on the children, mm -hmm. making sure they've had some snacks so they don't get grouchy, wow. and the snacks are not all about sugar, 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 and then making sure they have a rest, a nap, a meditation mm -hmm. time. Kids need that quietness. If, and if they're not sleeping, that they're actually sitting in a chair with a book with some downtime. And that they know that that is their downtime to re, mm -hmm. kind of recommit themselves to being healthy. Because mm -hmm. they're overexhausted, they're overstimulated. Yeah. So we need to sleep. I'd like to know, what type of snacks would you recommend? All right. First, fresh fruit. Some carrot sticks, some celery sticks. But we've been talking previously that we don't know if the fruits or vegetables are the best ones for us. Mm, uh -huh. So again, teaching the kids to wash them off and rinse them off. Okay. You can steam some veggies for them to eat and use a little dressing mm -hmm. for them to dip into it. Mm -hmm. They need protein. Kids need protein and good carbohydrates. So sandwiches are a great snack for them. 
And if you can get them with a better best, better best bread, and planning in advance. So if you make a whole piece of bread, you can cut it into fours. Okay. Give them P and J, peanut butter and jelly. Most countries, you can find some kind of some nut way. butter, yeah. Yeah, tahini, true. some kind of jam, some mm -hmm. kind of honey to make a good sandwich for them. And kids don't need so much variety. I think I hear, and myself included when I was young, I ate tuna sandwiches for probably six months. If your kids eat tuna sandwiches for six months or an egg salad sandwich, don't kind of try to keep giving them more variety. Right. Uh -huh. They don't need it. If it's healthy and you feel it's a good quality snack or a sandwich or lunch or dinner, they like noodle soup or they like snoop soup and a cracker, let them have that for mm. six months. You don't have to keep finding variety for them. Well, so many parents get so stressed about that. As I like know. You say they'll, you know, they'll, they stick to one thing, so they're just trying to force feed them with all these other things. No. But some kids really are fussy, aren't they? They're totally fussy eaters. And oh, do we have to talk about that? <laughs> we do have to talk about them. Here we are in a whole new country, and we've got all this wonderful food and experiences that the kids can have, and they don't want to eat it. They don't want to eat it. So, again, we're going to try to keep them eating the things that they're accustomed to eating in the States, if we can absolutely find it. A very few kids will not munch on a piece of chicken or steak mm -hmm. or there's one vegetable that that child will eat, give it that vegetable. If they eat that vegetable for the next 10 years of their life, that is fine with me. <laughs> Alrighty? And then we want to give them a good quality supplement that they can have so that their immune system is getting the minerals that it needs. Uh, most people are not so much vitamin deficient but mineral deficient. I heard that. So we can give kids some minerals and they can take it in the form of a chewy vitamin or something, so be sure to bring that with you mm -hmm. until you find out where it is there. And again, they need the carbohydrates, so noodles, 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 noodles. And then find things to put on top of the noodles, because kids love noodles. So we're talking um, cookie noodles with water, and we talked last week about the bottled water thing. That's so correct. So put the noodles in the bottled water? That is correct. Mm. And then find something that they can use. And kids usually will like cheese. If they're not allergic to the cheese, give them some cheese. Because these are things that I know over and over again when you're working and doing menu planning and you're in a new place. Mm -hmm. Um, those we know that the kids will eat. Even if the noodles have butter on them at this point, if they're not allergic to butter, because they feel satisfied. It's comfort food for them. Well, what about the, the cheese? Is that healthy? I mean, is that okay to eat in different countries? If the food is not processed, if it's, not if processed. it's real cheese, when they, I find okay. most expats, when they come to America, they are aghast at all the processed food we <laughs> exactly. have. Exactly. And processed cheese. I mean, <laughs> we're not talking about fake cheese. We're talking okay. about really good cheese. And in moderation, you know, because some of the reason we're getting sick is because we're over-inundating ourselves with food. And in most foreign countries, people eat smaller amounts. And we're encouraging people mm -hmm. to do that when they come to the States, uh -huh. to eat smaller amounts. Actually, talking about amounts, and you were saying before about comfort food, what about problems with children? Like, this obesity is a big problem in the United States, but there are definitely, obviously, obese children in other countries. And if they're being fussy about foods or their comfort eating, which some children do when they're lonely and in another country, how can we sort of, like, you know, guide them around to more healthy habits? All right. One of the things is... Um, some obesity and some overeating is because someone is not nourished. And that takes us back to the fact is our gut in good shape. Mm -hmm. People, children and adults have had way too many antibiotics. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that that's not a good remedy. But I think that people have the signs when someone's yeah. getting sick. There are very distinct signs. And again, attempting to get really good quality food into our children more fruit, more vegetables. And if you're afraid about something fresh, you can poach fruit because kids need that mm. sweet. So we can poach some fruit. We can give them a cooked cereal. In the States, we're not so used to eating cooked cereals, but in most foreign countries, mm -hmm. that's what they get for breakfast. And they have raisins on it and cinnamon and nutmeg and wonderful divine spices, which gives that sweetness to our young children mm -hmm. because they do like it. They do need the carbohydrates and they need the sugar. That's how they get that energy to go to school and think mm -hmm. well. So I think that if we take a look and plan ahead and know, have all the foods that we have in our little backpack and foods for them and take more, pay more attention to planning, mm -hmm. children will be more nourished. 
And that obesity issue has a lot to do with the fact that children are not nourished. Mm. Emotionally, spiritually, physically, and also with vitamins and minerals. Mm. Absolutely. So and that's do, what we're missing. They do tend to have that comfort eating type thing. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So it sounds like you've got this, you just provide us with so much information every time you come and talk to us, Mary. And we're very <laughs> grateful for that. And I mean, we started off with just talking about food, and now it's like looking at the whole child, which is obviously the most important thing. Yes. So you mentioned things like the planning, again, like with adults and keeping their, um, their systems um, really healthy to start with. And last two top tips, if there was two things a parent could do, what would they be? Rest, take a minute out, mm -hmm. using better water, mm -hmm. and again, looking for some, a child that might be getting sick on themselves so that they can, again, fortify themselves. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And I love that tip about getting the kids to just sit down. We're such bad role models when we get <laughs> racing around in our lives, but to have that solitude and to get centered again. Yes. Thank you so much for coming today. It's been wonderful. And thank you for last week. And if you'd like to find out more about Marion and the services she offers, um, you can certainly check out our website for her information on www.theexpatview.com. And also, if you'd like to support our Global Sisters, um, we also support the Kiva Foundation and ask you to do so as well. They provide microcredit to women in developing countries. We'd also like to invite you to visit our Facebook page, and we'd like for you to tell us about some concerns or that are challenges that you're having with your children and healthy eating. Again, thank you for joining us today from our living room in Houston to yours.